Hey everybody, it's Michael Martin. How are you doing today? So watching your P&L while you trade is actually stunting your growth. I know that's not a popular opinion because you're watching your screen all day and it's very hard to escape that. Let me tell you a little story. When I was starting, obviously markets were very different. Things traded in eighths and I was broke and my account was very small and it, I was early in the game to trading and I was watching my P&L all day long. And I could see tick by tick how my account was changing. And it wasn't like it was lighting me up like a Christmas tree, but I kept thinking about like, what could I do with that money? In the end, it ended up inducing me to do trades that I shouldn't have done because I ended up taking profits too soon. And I ended up watching the names that I had been in, the winning trades I had been in, continue to move after I had already gotten out. And so I think ultimately, you, that feeling that you, that you have of, of wanting to take the, the winner leads to regret. I was listening and reading uh, to some comments that I got via email and on the channel channel about the, the video, you know, take, looking for the optimum setup. And some of the comments came in about, you know, looking for far, 5R versus 3R. And if you look for 5R, it's going to drastically change your winning percent. But who cares? You're not optimizing your winning percent. You're trying to squeeze out of, out of the trade as much money as you possibly can, right? I wrote about all of this in my, my book, The Inner Voice of Trading. You can get the audiobook version for free. The, the link is in the description if you haven't already gotten it. Regrets come from your wanting to take profits too soon. And that comes from watching your P&L during the day. The only thing that you can control is, besides having a good attitude, is adjusting your stops. And I think you need to rewire the way that you think about winning. This isn't a game of accuracy. It's about expected value, right? It's not about winning per se, right? You need to have a winning percent. You need to know what your winner to loser ratio is. So it does play a part, but it's not the only thing. So if you are struggling, my guess is you're thinking about winning all the time. And this is a game of, like I said, it's about expectation, not accuracy. You have to be relatively accurate. But if you keep taking small gains, you know, go back and, and watch the video that I did on taking consistent small gains. You're going to be the small trader forever. And I guess if that's your goal, if your goal is to be winning, then that's probably okay with you. But I knew I needed to change my life and I needed to do that by taking gigantic gains. Which again, when I was up one or two R, I wasn't like, oh my God, I have to start getting ready to protect this because I was afraid of giving it all back. That was early. That was maybe three, four, five, six months into my four-year journey till I was getting, you know, till I knew I was onto something and I actually had some skill. But nowadays when I look at that, so say, you know, you got a million dollars, you're risking a half a percent, you're up one or 2,000 in a trade. You're not thinking about taking that off. You're just getting started. So again, if you don't know because you're a chart reader and you haven't figured out what you're, um, expected value of a trade is you probably get excited about small gains. So your goal should be to stop worrying about winning, stop looking at your P&L and optimize your process to squeeze out as much cash as possible on every winning trade. Not to look for a certain number and say, bingo, there it is. There's my three arm taking it. That's the wrong way to go about it. You very well might sit there and be profitable doing that. But I guarantee you that's a suboptimal strategy. You could be doing more. It doesn't feel good to do more, so you don't do it. So you have to look at the math and see what the opportunity cost is. And I'm guessing it's large because some of these things, like look what happened with NVIDIA recently. If you were happy taking 10%, you left a lot of money on the table, right? So don't look at your P&L during the day. All you have to worry about is adjusting your stops. If the thing's moving forward and you're long, Know when you're going to move your stop, whether you want to use ATR or a certain price point or what have you. Those are the only things you need to do is just manage your book of stop orders. You've got stop orders to enter. You might have stops above the market to add to your winners. And then as you're winning, right, and you're not knocked out, just adjust your protective stop higher. It's not going to kill you. Those feelings that you don't want to feel are, are robbing you from profitability and the choice is yours. It's up for you to do that. You have to rewire how you think about winning and losing. 
It's not about accuracy. It's not about winning percentage. That's the last thing that you should be thinking about. Winner to loser ratio is at least as important as your winning percentage. So don't worry about optimizing for accuracy. That's not the game at all. Anyway, if you like this video, there's more over here. Check them out.